السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیس اینڈ بلیسنگس آف اللہ ٹو آل آف یو لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹلمین ویلکم دا ٹاپک از واٹ القرآن سیز اباؤٹ دا تورا عربک ورڈ تورا ٹرانسلیٹڈ ایز لا دا لا ان انگلش ان جیل Arabic word translated as, translated as the good news. This is the topic. These two words are commonly shared between the Christian world. The Christian world by themselves, they also believe that they have got the Torah with themselves and they have got the gospel translation of Injil with themselves. So I will be comparing the Bible and the Quran in the connection of the, these two words, the Torah and the Injil. And in that connection, first of all, I would like to discuss about the Bible. The, when I use the word Bible, be, be particular when I use the word Torah and when I use the word Injil. So you must know when I say Bible, As I, as I hold in my hand, it is written on the Bible, it's Holy Bible. Now, how does it contain the word Torah, a Hebrew word Torah, which is translated in Arabic as Torah? How does it contain? First, I'll explain that. And then the gospel translated of the Injil Arabic word, how these two words that have occurred in this book, the Holy Bible. First from the Bible and then what the Qur'an has to say about these two words, the Torah and Jeel. This is the topic you, have, you are going to listen. So first of all, I have to explain to you what the Bible is. The Bible I hold in my hand contains, if you open this first page, contains the Old Testament and the New Testament, which means that that certain part of the Bible, the first part of of this Bible, every Bible of the world contains the Old Testament from Adam to, to Moses, the time period described in the Bible, they have referred in the Old Testament, which is believed by the Jews themselves as the, the only book they believe, the first part of this Bible. The second part is the New Testament. There are certain books in the New Testament and this Old Testament and New Testament put together is the Bible which the Christians believe. The Christians believe the Old Testament and the New Testament put together as the Holy Bible, they believe this. But the Jews only believe the first part that is the Old Testament, they believe that. They only believe that. So in the Old Testament, there are 46 books in the Douay version, a name given to the Bible, Douay version. There are many versions of the Bible. So I'm just referring to one of the versions that is the Douay version. And the other is the King James version. So the, in the Old Testament, there's a difference between the, between the Douay version and the King James version. And that is with 38 books in the King James version. The New Testament that is believed by the Christian world, both, contains 27 books. Meaning this book I hold in my hand contains books of the Old Testament books. I mean, listen to the English. The book I hold in my hand contains the books of the Old Testament, the books of the New Testament. I, and the book is one I hold in my hand, is a book. But it contains books that in the general terminology should be referred as a chapters. But the Christian world and the Jewish world, they say these are the books. So the first five books of the Old Testament that is referred as Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. The first five books of the Old Testament. These are referred as the Pentateuch or the Torah of the Hebrew word Torah of the Jews. Now the word Torah 
it comes. Meaning in the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, the first five book, books contains the Torah and that in these books is written that Moses got the Torah. Moses got the Torah. This is what is written in the first five books. And you, if you ask a Jew or you, if you ask a Christian that Moses was got the Torah, where is the Torah? That he got Torah. And what, what, who gave this Torah? So they will say the first five books are the Torah, is the Torah. The first book, five books, is basically are the Torah. This is accepted by the Jews and the accepted by the Christians. The Torah is that in this book, Moses was preaching the Torah. What the Torah is, no description, the whole book, five books. But five books are referred as painter took as referred as Torah. The, the second part for the New Testament is the, the first four books, Gospel according to Mark, Gospel according to Matthew, Gospel according to John, and Gospel according to Luke. These are the four Gospel writers. Gospel in Arabic means in G, translated as Evangel, or translated as Gospel or good news or glad tidings. These are the translate, translation in English and like that. So these gospel that I am referring to in these four gospels, gospel according to Mark, gospel according to Matthew, gospel according to Mark and Luke and John. In these gospel writings, it is written down that Jesus preached the gospel in these five gospel writings. According to Mark and Matthew, Luke and John, they are telling us that Jesus preached the gospel. Jesus preached the gospel. Jesus preached the Injil in these four Matthew, Mark and Luke and John. So now when you ask the Christian, where is the gospel? They say according to Mark, according to Matthew, according to Luke and according to John, they say that Jesus preached the gospel and gospel means the good news. What is the Torah not defined in the whole Bible? What is the gospel? Injil is not defined in the whole Bible. But these two words have occurred in the Old Testament and the New Testament and then they are telling us the first five books is the Torah, the four gospel writings and in that writings we see, they say that there are statements there that Jesus preached the gospel and in the five, five books they say Moses was given the Torah. Torah of the Hebrew word translated in Arabic as Torah. This is the standpoint of a Jew and a Christian. Now we have to see and, for, and this was to Moses got the Torah is written down in the, these five books. And in the Gospel according to Mark and Matthew, Luke and John that Injil was given to Jesus. This is the standpoint of the Jews and the Christians according to the Bible. Now we will see what the Quran has to say about the Torah and Injil. That is the topic. But further, I would like to tell you something more that I have to explain to you that there are, if you open this page, page number, this, uh, this staple page that refers to attributes, names of Al-Kitab. Staple page, right? Now before I discuss this, about the, what the Quran has to uh, speak about the word Torah, because the word Torah has occurred in the Quran. And the Injil, the word has occurred in the Quran. How they are explained and how it is written down, I will discuss that later in, uh, according to ayats. But I would like to tell you uh, the, that, 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 that like for example, Allah is a personality, has got a fitrat and is defined by his attributes, the names of Allah. Like Allah is Ar-Rahman, most gracious, Ar-Rahim, most merciful, Al-Wudud, most loving, and on and on. There are above 99 attributes and names 
describing about Allah. So we do not say there are 99 Allahs or gods, astaghfirullah. We say that Allah is described with his attributes and names. They are the description of Allah's personality, how he is. He is Ghafoor, He is Rahim, merciful, forgiving. This is the attribute. Similarly, the book of Allah, like the Bible I hold in my hand, when I said the book, contain books. Similarly, I hold in my hand is a book. In that book are ayats, ayats. And when we read, that is Quran. Quran means reading. Iqra means read. A command, Iqra, read. Quran means reading. So what, what the books contain, basically it's a book. Allah refers this book as the book also. And it also refers as Quran. There is a difference. But we understand the book has got above 32 attributes, above 33 attributes mentioned in this book. So first I will read the names of this page that they are the attributes of the book. And they are the Quran is an attribute, means the reading of the book. Al-Kitab means the book. Al-Kitab means the written one of the book I hold in mind. This is the book. But it contains these words that I am reading. They contains in these, the book contains these words in Arabic. And that is, At-Tawrah means the law. Al-Injil meaning the good news. Al-Zabur means the peace. Al-Furqan means the criterion. Burhan means the proof. Sultan means the authority. Al-Hikmah, the wisdom. Hidayah, the guidance. Nazil, the revelation. Wahi, inspiration. Kalamun, speech or word. Basairun, insight. Ayat, signs. Al-Majid, the glorious. Al-Ajib, the amazing. An-Nur, the light. Asal Hadith, the most beautiful narration or incident or event. al Asal Qasas, the most beautiful, beautiful relationship. Al-Amthal, the examples. al mawiza the sermon. Al-Dhikr, the remembrance. Al-Wah, the tablets. Ziyaun, the shine. Bayinat, clarification. Risalat, the messages. al amba the prophecy. al qawl the saying. Sohaf, the pages. Sharia, the way. Al-Amr, the order. Al-Haq, the truth. al in the knowledge. These words have occurred in the, in, in the book of Allah. These words. All these words that I've read, you will, the reference are given. I didn't read the reference. I just want to clarify that these words have occurred in the book of Allah, in the Arabic. They have got their meanings. I've read the meanings. So the book contains these words. They are the qualitative or the description of the book. They are just like Allah is described by his attributes and names. Similarly, the book is described by his attributes and names. So the book of Allah contains these words. And they are the descriptive names of the book of Allah. So Allah is not 99 above 199 gods. Neither there are many books. There is one book. And we will see how. So... Now I will read the ayat which will explain the topic about the Torah, the word, the means the law, Al Injil, the meaning the Injil means the good news or the gospel or the glad tidings. According to the ayats, we will read. But first of all, we will read the difference or the understanding between Quran and Al Kitab. Al Quran is Arabic word, Al Kitab is also an Arabic word. How Allah explain these two? You, we go to Yunus 10 and Ayah 37. That is also the staple page. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ أَنْ يُفْتَرَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَتَفْصِيلَ الْكِتَابِ 
La rayba fihi min rabbil alameen. And this Al-Quran, the reading is not that can be produced from other than Allah, but it is a confirmation that is between his two hands and an explanation of Al-Kitab, the book. There is no doubt in it from the Lord of the worlds. If you look into the ayah again carefully, the word Arabic Quran has occurred. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ this Arabic word, Qur'an, has occurred in the ayah, in Arabic. And in the, in the fourth uh, portion of this, it is referred as وَتَفْسِيلَ tafsil kitab The other word is kitab. So Qur'an and kitab in one verse, in one ayah. So if you look, if you translate these words, you will understand the essence of the ayah. Normally we don't translate, when we translate then we understand. And this Qur'an means this reading is not that can be produced from other than Allah, but it is a confirmation that is between his two hands and explanation of Al-Kitab, the book. There is no doubt in it from the Lord of the worlds. So if you will note that I read this ayah in Arabic from the book, it is written in front of me. That is written from the, the new book in your, you, you, you people also holding the book in your hands. So when you are holding this book, is a book. And when I am reading the ayah, that is Qur'an. Qur'an is the reading of the ayah, of the book. And when I read, it, it becomes, it, the Qur'an is a confirmation. First of all, it verifies what is between your two hands. It is verifying, you can verify that I am reading correctly or wrongly. Or I am reading correct or wrong, you can verify. This reading, Quran means the reading cannot be proved from other than Allah, but it is a confirmation. What is between his two hands? So you can confirm that the reading is being done correct. It's not been concoction. It is not my own concepts. It's a confirmation. And the, the second part of this Quran is our tafsil al kitab, and it is explanation of the kitab of the book. Whenever you read any book. Then the explanation of that book comes. If you're reading any book of the world, that is reading would be Quran, and the reading of the book would be Quran, and the reading itself, then you will be ex the book will be explained to you. So if you do not read any book, this book lying down anywhere, Quran or any book, if you're not reading that book, you don't understand anything. Similarly, if you read Al-Kitab, the book of Allah, the ayahs of Allah, the book of Allah, Quran means the reading, it, it is a confirmation from what is between your two hands. You can confirm the reading and the written down. Written one is confirmed. The reading is confirming the written one. And an explanation of the book. Similarly, you, you're being explained. You're being understanding what you're reading. So this is what Quran is an explanation of the book, the written one. And a confirmation of the book, the written one. This is Quran, the reading. So now we will go and understand about the word Torah, the topic, what the Quran has to say about the Torah. So in Surah Ali Imran, three Surah and Ayah three, page number three. Nazzala alayka al-kitab bil-haq, musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi, wa anzala al-tawrat wal-injil, min qabl hudan lil-nas, wa anzal al-furqan. It is he who has revealed over you al-kitab, the book, the writing with the truth, confirming what is be between his two hands and from before he revealed a Torah, the law, and Al-Injil, the good news, and a guidance for mankind. And he revealed Al-Furqan, the criterion. Now, now you see, I, I just read, you read, you read, see the Arabic. You see the most, because Arabic is the confirmation that I am speaking the truth or not. The, the Arabic says, Nazzala alayka al-kitab. What I hold in my hand is the kitab, the book. So Allah says, Nazzala alayka al kitab bil haq. So it is, the Nazzala means that it is He who revealed over you, that is Muhammad Rasulullah, the kitab, the book. Here is not referring as kitab, not Quran. Here is kitab, bil haq, with truth. The word kitab means the book. I have already explained. Musaddiq al lima bayna yadayhi, and it is a confirmant what is between his two hands. 
Similarly, this book, you, what I am reading, Quran, it is confirming this kitab. You can verify also what is in between your two hands. It is a confirmation. Wa anzal Torah, wal Injil, and he revealed the Torah, the law, and the Injil, the good news of the gospel. Min kabul from before, hudal a guidance for mankind. So the Torah, the law, and the Injil, the good news was revealed from before a guidance for mankind this Torah and Injil here in this ayah does not refer to Moses or Jesus remember this you read very carefully because we are told from the Bible that the Torah was given to Moses Torah and the Injil was given to Jesus I read before in the Bible we are seeing what the Quran is saying now here only the Torah, the word has occurred. Wa anzala Torah, wa injil min qablu hudal linnas wa anzal furqan. Another word, furqan means the criteria. So here, if you will note that who is revealing? Allah is the, the reveal. Allah is revealing over you the book in truth, confirming what is between his two hands, and he also revealed on who? Who it, to whom is revealing? Ji. Muhammad, the Torah, and the Torah, he revealed the Torah, and the Injil, Min Kablu, from before a guidance for mankind. This Torah, the law, this Injil, the good news, is a guidance for mankind. Wa Anzal Furqan, and he revealed the Furqan, the criterion. So they are four different words, if you note, in the one ayah. And the revelation is given to Muhammad, وسلم, and through him, we get this message. Meaning the revelations on the book, the, he revealed the kitab, and he revealed the Torah, the law, and he revealed the Injil, the good news of the gospel, and he revealed the Furqan, the criterion. Four things are revealed. We are reading the Quran now, we, we are seeing in the Quran, and the purpose of the revelation of the Torah, the law, and the Injil, the good news, is a guidance for mankind from before. In all times, the Torah, the law, was a guidance for mankind from before. Not now new, it is the guidance from before. That mankind was taking guidance from the Torah, the law, Injil, the good news, from before. Still now, no Musa Islam is mentioned, no Isa Islam is mentioned. It is, maybe it's mentioned when you see other ayahs. But at the moment we know that the purpose from here, this ayah, we come to know that the kitab is revealed, the book is revealed on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa a confirmation what is between his two hands, and he revealed the Torah, the law, and he revealed the Injil, the good news, which is a guidance for mankind from before. And Wanzrat Furqan, and he revealed the Furqan, the criterion, which is another attributes of the Quran, the reading. This is the understanding. Now we will see how the, what is the Torah. First we will discuss what is the Torah. Surah Al-Ma'idah 5 and Ayah 43. وَكَيْفَ يُحَكِّمُونَكَ وَعِنْدَهُمُ التَّوْرَاهِ فِيهَا حُكْمُ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يَتَوَلَّوْنَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ وَمَا أُولَيْكَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ And how can they govern you, that is Muhammad peace be upon him, and a Torah, the law, is near them. In the Torah, in the Torah, in, 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 in it is hukum, or the government of Allah. Then after they turn away, they are not with the believers. If you look at the ayat, again, the word Torah has occurred. وَكَيْفَ يُحَكِّمُونَكَ وَعِنْدَهُمُ التَّوْرَةِ The word Torah, separate alone. And the ayat says, how can they govern you, referring to Muhammad, peace be upon him, when the Torah is near them. They have got the Torah, means the law is near them, they have got it. Fiha Hukmullah in the Torah is the Hukum of Allah. Torah means the law. The law contains the Hukum of Allah, translated as government of Allah. So the Torah, the word in Arabic, we come to know from the ayah that contains the Hukum of Allah. Where are the Hukum or the government of Allah? Where are they? Where are the Hukum of Allah? What are the ahkamat 
in the plural of hukum is ahkamat in Arabic, meaning governing, governing, governing body or governings. Hukum is singular, ahkamat is plural. So Allah says that the Torah, the word, the Torah or the law contains the hukum of Allah, means the government of Allah. So what are the hukum? Plural to hukum is ahkamat, meaning governings, governments or governing, governing ayats. So we have to understand what are the governing ayahs or what are the ahkamat ayahs mentioned in the book, in the book, which contains the word Torah. The book, we are reading the, in the book, this is a book. We are reading in the book the word Torah, which contains the law. And in the Torah is the hukum of Allah. So we know that the book contains the Torah word and the Torah word contains the hukum of Allah, the government of Allah. Now we have to see what is the Torah explained in the ayahs. Surah, we go to the previous page, Ali Imran 3 and Ayah 7. Page 5. Huwa alladhi anzala alayka al-kitab minhu ayatun muhkamat hunna ummu al-kitab wa ukharu mutashabihat fa amma alladhina fi qulubihim zayg fa yattabi'una ma tashabah min abtigha'af al-fitnati wa abtigha'a ta'wili wa ma ya'lamu ta'wilahu illa Allah والراسقون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الباب. It is He who has revealed Al Kitab, the book over you. In from it are the muhkamat, the governing ayat, signs. They are the mother of the book. And others are mutashabihat, resembling ayat signs. So in whose hearts is a deviation? then they follow that, that resembles from it, seeking its captivation and its interpretation. And no one knows its interpretation except Allah. And those who are stable in knowledge, they say we believe with it. All is from nearness of our Lord. And no one remembers except those who possess the core, the inner part of, and innermost part of anything. Now in this whole ayah, I will just discuss the first half portion of the ayah which is related to our topic. It is He, Allah, who has revealed over you the Al-Kitab, the book. Again, the book. The book. Allah has revealed over you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the book, the written one. From the book, from it, from the book, are ayats, Ayas are signs. Muhkamat means governing ayas. Governing ayas. Muhkamat ayas. Or ahkamat ayas. The, the ayats that contains the ahkamat. Or the muhkamat. Or the translated as governing ayas. By virtue we have to govern ourselves. The orders. Hukum of Allah. The, ay the governing ayas. Hunna ummul kitab. They are the mother of the book. The ayahs that are governing ayahs or the muhkamat ayahs, they are the mother of the book. Wa ukharu mutashabihat. And the others are mutashabihat ayat that resembles. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the previous ayat we know that the wa kaifa yuhakkimunaka wa indahum at tawrah fiya hukum Allah. So, Torah contains the hukum of Allah. And the plural of hukum is ahkamat. And the ayat that are muhkam or contains the ahkamat are the, Allah says they are the muhkamat ayat, translated as governing ayas. The ayas that are governing ayas is the mother of the book. Is the mother of the book. Mother of the book. This is a book I hold in my hand, is a book. So what are the governing ayas in the book? The ayas that are governing ayas, the governing ayahs is, uh, is the mother of the book. What name you will give to that mother of the book? Torah, the law. Because it contains the hukum of Allah. So this book contains the Torah. This book I hold in my hand contains the Torah. This, it is a hukum of Allah and the ayats. In the ayahs which contains the the ayahs that contains the ayat that contains the hukum are the muhkumat ayat. I repeat, 
the ayat that contains the hukum of Allah are described by Allah as the muhkamat ayats. They are the governing ayats. And these muhkamat ayats are referred as the Torah or the mother of the book. The book. The mother of the book. So what is the mother of the book? Is the Torah contained in Al-Kitab. So one of the muhkamat ayat I read for you, one ayat I refer to in Al-Maidah 5 and Ayah 45. وَكَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهَا أَنَّ النَّفْسَ بِالنَّفْسِ وَالْعَيْنَ بِالْعَيْنِ وَالْأَنْفَ بِالْأَنْفِ وَالْأُذُنَ بِالْأُذُنِ وَالسِّنَّ بِالسِّنِّ وَالْجُلُوحَ قِصَاصِ فَمَنْ تَصَدَّقَ بِهِ فَهُوَ كَفَّارَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ مُظَالِمُونَ And we have written in it, that is the, in the Torah, on them, on people, on the prophets and on everybody. That is the soul is with the soul, an eye is with an eye, and a nose is with, is with a nose, and an ear is an ear with an ear, and a tooth is with a tooth, and there is a relation of the wounds. That is the physical injuries or the hurt of the feelings. So who gives charity with it, then his atonement, that is amendment is for him, and who does not govern with what Allah has revealed, then they are the zalimun, the oppressors. So now in this ayah we come to know what the Torah, what is in the Torah, in the law. What is in the Torah? The first of all we have come to know what is in the book. The book contains the muhkamat ayat or the governing ayats and these governing ayat are the mother of the book referred as the Torah. Now we are seeing what the Torah contains, one of the hukum. That is an, a soul is with the soul, an eye is with an eye and the nose is with the nose and ear is with the ear and the tooth is with the tooth and there is the relation of the wounds. Now this I will explain in just, uh, just a simple water explanation is if that doesn't mean normally it is understood like this. If I uh, hurt your eye, you hurt my eye. It is not like such. There is a word in the Quran which means qisas, a relationship. In here also the word has well juruha qisas. Qisas means that if you have hurt in my eye, you can ask certain amount of compensation from me. If you have hurt my eye, or you hurt my nose, or you hurt my tooth, or you hurt my feelings, physical or psychological. So in all these conditions, you can ask for a qasas, a relationship, a, 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 a compensation, so that it's not a life that I kill you, you kill me. That's not in the ayat of the Quran, nowhere. It just says that there's a compassion, there's a relation of the wounds. Their physical injuries or hurt or the feelings. So in this context, what is an explanation in the whole ayat is that if you hurt somebody's eyes hurt by someone, he can give the compensation, a kisas of that, of that eye or the tooth or, 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 or an ear or a nose. There is a relation of the, if you hurt uh, any kind of a wound, you have hurt somebody's feelings or hurts. You can say sorry if he doesn't, we want some more than sorry, you can, you can give anything. So who gives charity with it? He says, And who gives charity with, and he has atonement, has, that is amendment is for him, who does not govern with what Allah has revealed, then they are the zalimun, the oppressors. So what in this ayah, first of all, it is written in the Torah, this ayah. This ayah reading is written in the Torah, the law. The second aspect of this law is that if you hurt somebody's feeling, if you hurt by anything is hurt by somebody, the other party is asked to take the compensation, compensation a sadqa or a charity is an atonement or a betterment, uh, amendment for him. That is the qasas, a relationship. So there is no way that you kill somebody, you, you have the right to kill. You cannot, you cannot kill somebody. If somebody kills you, you are not allowed to kill the other fellow. The Quran doesn't teach us this. This is the wrong conception. So this was the explanation of the Torah, that this is what Torah is. Now the second part is what the Quran has to say about the Injil, the Gospel. So Al-Maida 46 ayat, I am discussing now what the Quran has to say about the Injil. In Al-Maida 5 ayah 46. وَقَفَّيْنَا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ بِعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْإِنْجِيلِ فِيهِ هُدًا وَنُورِ وَمُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ and we made the falling over their effects with Isa, Jesus the son of Maryam, Mary, confirming from the Torah the law, 
That is the hukum, the government of Allah containing the, all the governing ayats. That is between his two hands. And we gave him al the good news or the gospel. In it is guidance and light. And confirming from at tawrah the law. That is between his two hands. And a guidance and a sermon for the muttaqeen, those who guard. Now in this ayah, it is telling us that from the, on the effects of the, the, the Allah made the fouling over the effects of their prophets. In the previous ayah, inna anzalna tawrah is the prophets. So it is, uh, Isa Islam came under the same, uh, Isa Islam came in the falling of the effects of the prophets. So Allah says, Isa Islam came, so Allah gave Isa Islam uh, that Isa Islam came and he confirmed from the Torah. Confirmed from the Torah, from the law. So Isa Islam came and confirmed from the Torah, the law. That means he was confirming the, 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 the Mohkam ayat, that ayat, the Quran, the Kitab contains the Mohkam ayat, ayat or the governing ayat. He came and he confirmed the Torah, the law. Injil, and he was given the Injil or the good news or the gospel. Fihi hudam wa nur. In it, in the in the Injil is in it is guidance and light. The same attribute what is what was given to Torah. In Nanzalna Torah, Fiha Hudam wa Nur. Surely we reveal the Torah. In it is guidance and light. And now the Injil is given to Isa Islam. And it says, Fihi Udam Wanur, it is, it, it is, contains the, the guide, uh, guidance and light. Same. The Torah contains guidance and light. The Injil contains the guidance and light. Same. The word is different. The Torah means the law. Injil means the good news or the gospel. But what can, it contains, it contains guidance and light, which is a const, which is the same as mentioned in the Torah. Now, Isa Salam confirmed from the Torah. And Allah said it was the Injil was given to Isa Salam in this ayah. But it further he said that Injil is the one Musaddi Kalima Baina Yadehim Tawrah. So Injil is confirming what is between his two hands from the Tawrah. Listen, look, look very carefully. If you look very carefully in this ayah, in Arabic it says Isa Salam wa kafaina ala atharim bi isam ni maryam. We made the falling over the effects of Isa, Jesus, son of Mary, confirming from at Torah the law. This is that Isa Islam confirms from what was from the Torah. Right? But if you look downwards, what was given to him in Jeet, in it contains guidance and light, and again, is repeated. So here it is referred to in Jeet. So Injil itself is also confirming what is between his two hands from the Torah. So Isa Salam came and confirmed what is between his two hands from the Torah. And the Injil what was given to him, the good news that was given to him was also confirming what is between his, his two hands from the Torah. So Injil is, is also a confirmation between his two hands what you people are holding, Injil also a confirmation of, of that. And further it says, and wa hudam wa mawzatil lil muttaqeen. And a guidance, and mawza means sermon for muttaqeen, for those who guard. Injil, a gospel, a good news becomes further what? First it's constant. It is the faith, the Torah, the Torah, the Isa Islam confirmed from the Torah. Injil also confirmed the Torah. Torah contains the guidance and light. The Injil contains the guidance and light. It's same. But Injil further, Allah says, it is a guidance. It is a guidance and a sermon for muttaqeen. Wa hudaw wa mawidatan lil muttaqeen. What is a guidance? Injil is a guidance and a mawza sermon for muttaqeen. This is the last portion of that ayah. So what we have to understand, any, listen to me very carefully, any mahkum ayat, any ayat which is a mahkum, which contains the hukum, what is it? It is the Torah. So Isa Salam came and recited that, that ayah. 
that is a mahkam ayat so that mahkam ayat or that governing ayat he confirmed and that was given to isa salam in jeel which is also a sermon of that ayah of that mahkam ayat that same very ayat torah means the law when the law ayat that contains the torah the law is recited by isa salam that confirms what was before before it, before it was there the torah was there the law was there so isa salam was giving sermon of the torah of the law so it confirms from the torah and the sermon that he gave was also confirming from the torah and that is injil and that is good news so in other words good news gospel injil becomes a sermon or a guidance of the of the of the torah of the law ayat that contains the mahkam ayat all the ayat the mahkam ayat ayat is the torah and isa salam came and confirmed from the torah and the injil the good news that was given to him he gave the sermon of the torah he recited or he gave the sermon of the torah ayat of the law of the of those ayats which are mahkam ayat or governing ayats so in this aspect you must understand that injil is just good news of a recitation or a sermon of the mahkam ayats or a explanation of the sermon of the mahkam governing ayats and that is the torah the law so by name it is different by name itself is gospel or injil or good news but it's the, it's, it is it is also confirming the same thing it is a guidance and light it is a, torah is a guidance and light it is torah uh, injil is com- confirming from the torah the law isa salam is also confirming from the torah the law and torah the law is the mahkamat ayat <coughs> and it is also for those who guard this is this mahkam ayat the, uh, the injil is for those who are muttaqin those who guard the ayat ends with muttaqin wa hudaw wa mawidatul lil muttaqin mawida mawidatul lil muttaqin mawiza means it's a, it is a sermon it is a guidance injil is a guidance a hidayah mawiza sermon lil muttaqin for those who guard it is not for the christians this injil that i am reciting it is a it is a hidayah or it is a mawiza sermon of isa salam for those who guard the muttaqin and now further i in continuation almaida 547 wal yahkum ahlul injil bima anzal allah fi wa man lam yahkum bima anzal allah and let the Ahlul Injil, the people of the good news of the gospel, govern with what Allah has revealed in it, and who do not govern with what Allah has revealed, they are Fasikun, they are liberal people, the liberals who do not follow the rules, the governing ayahs, they take the liberty, Fasikun. Now, so this Allah said, Wal Yahkum Ahlul Injil. So let the Ahlal Injil, let the people of the Injil be ma- be Allah, govern with what Allah has revealed. People of Injil, who are the people of Injil? Hmm? No. Those who guard Muttaqeen, the previous ayah. You see, Muslim, I understand, of course, Muslim, but look, look at the context of the ayah. The ayat is referred to Muttaqeen, the people who have taqwa, those who guard their personalities. Allah is referring to, we can say Muslim, I understand that, that referring, we are all, the, all this is coming to us, but we must see the context of that, it ends with muttaqeen, so Allah is also referring to, wal yahkum ahlul injil, those who guard, they are the muttaqeen, wal yahkum ahlul injil, bima anzallahu fi, wa man lam yahkum bima anzallah, fa ulaikum ul so Allah said, let the ahlul injil, the people of injil, that means they are the muttaqeen, those who guard, with govern with it, what, what Allah has revealed, and who do not govern with what Allah is revealed, they are the fasikun, those who take the liberty. Means liberty they don't practice. The fasik is a person who is a liberal. Liberty, who takes liberty on not practicing any of the rules and regulation. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what is Anjil? By translation is gospel or good news or glad tidings. But what is Anjil? It is the same, a confirmation of the Torah, one aspect of it, the second aspect is it is a guidance 
and a sermon of the Torah, of the ayahs that are mokmaer, the Torah, the guidance and a sermon for those who guard, means the muttaqi people. So people who are muttaqin, who guard themselves, let them also, Allah says, wal yahkum alul injil. So, so let the Ahlul Injil should govern with what Allah has revealed. And if they do not so, then they are the fasik or they take liberty. So I will, the point is Al Injil, the good news is mentioned 16 times in Al Quran. Al Injil, the good news is a revelation from Allah. Injil, the good news is a confirmation from Al Torah, the law, and is a guidance and light sermon for Muttaqin, those who guard. And if the muttaqin, those who guard, do not govern by the Injil good news, they are fasikun. So ladies and gentlemen, in the beginning I read, the gospel according to gospel means Injil. Injil in Arabic and, and, and gospel in English. Uh, so they have said that Isa Salam teach the gospel according to Mark, according to Matthew, according to Luke, and according to John. Mark and Matthew, Luke and John, four gospel writers are saying, that Jesus preached the gospel. The Mark is saying that Jesus preached the gospel. What is the gospel? Not known. The good news is known, of course, the meaning, translation of gospel. Of, but what is, the, what is the teaching? What he teaches was the gospel. So in the Quran, we come to know that the gospel is a confirmation of the Torah. The Isa Salam was given the Injil. It is the confirmation of the Torah, the law. And it is a sermon of the ayahs of the law, the Mokam ayah, the Torah. So Isa Salam did not came with the, something new. It was the same. The sermon of the Mokam ayah, the law, the Torah, the law. And it was a guidance for those who guard. It was a sermon to those who guard. So the Ahl al-Injil, Allah says, let them also, they, let the Ahl al-Injil, people of the Injil, Muttaqeen, should govern with what Allah has revealed. So we come to know what Injil Jesus brought, Isa Salam brought in this ayah.